The guidelines for mammography from the American College of Radiology basically suggest that asymptomatic women begin screening mammography beginning at age 40 with yearly examinations recommended thereafter. Screening mammography is directed toward a woman who has no symptoms. That is, no nipple discharge, no masses in your breast. Screening mammography refers to asymptomatic situations. The recommendation for when screening might stop really is left in the hands of the patient and or her communications with her doctor. No matter how mammography is performed, it requires compression and it requires radiation. So if you have the radiation go through the breast as it's compressed, the information gathered can either be on a piece of film or it can be digital. Film screen mammography is still performed in the world, much less so than it used to be. It's been replaced in many instances by digital imaging. Digital imaging has a lot of benefits. You have information that can be sent from place to place if it's digital. And at the workstation, the imager can manipulate the images, making the contrast or the brightness better. Tomosynthesis, so-called 3D mammography, is not exactly three-dimensional, but the idea here is that you take multiple images through the breast and then through technology you can then page through these images having a better ability to separate out elements of the breast tissue that can overlap and can sometimes appear to be a lesion when in fact they are not. In the situation where a woman has a symptom, a lump, nipple discharge, a problem that needs further evaluation beyond a mammogram, ultrasound is an extraordinarily important tool in our armamentarium. We then use ultrasound in this setting to gain more information about what this lesion might or might not be. As we have looked further into ways in which women may be helped with screening evaluation in the asymptomatic breast, screening ultrasound has come into the picture. We're in the midst of learning about how best to perform screening ultrasound. We'd like to better understand which women will benefit from this study the most. The vast majority of women who are asymptomatic and are seeking screening for breast cancer should get a mammogram. There are some women who fall into risk categories greater than 20% lifetime risk for getting breast cancer for which breast magnetic resonance imaging is a more sensitive and recognized as a tool that may be more beneficial to them. The decision how often to perform breast MRI may be variable. It could be yearly, and that is a typical approach for the high-risk women, those in particular who have a known BRCA mutation. But in general, that would be a yearly test in conjunction with a mammogram. Through risk assessment, we hope to direct women with more of a turn away from the idea of one size fits all and perhaps direct those at highest risk to more sensitive screening tools such as magnetic resonance imaging of the breasts. Assessing the risk for developing breast cancer is actually a very important and very complicated process. Women who are very concerned, understandably so, to have some direction to assess their relative risk for developing breast cancer have excellent opportunities in that arena to speak with their primary caregivers, to possibly be referred to genetic counselors to go to risk clinics. There are very helpful websites available to women. Some of these have been developed by state, others are developed by individuals, and some have been developed by the government. I encourage women to ask questions when they have them, to look online for information that is becoming more available all the time, and to look toward that which is shown to be a proven way to screen for breast cancer and get a mammogram.